This game's called the Layup Wheel for grades 5 to 8. You're going to need basketballs and nets, and this is a great game to practice layups after you've gone over the progression. So you're going to use all six basketball nets in your gym and the center circle, and you'll create six teams, and each team will face one of the hoops, and the first person in each line will get a ball. Now on the signal, the first person in each line will run to their net and perform a layup, and whether it goes in or not, they'll get the, the ball and bring it back for the next person in line, and then they'll go to the back of the line, and that continues on and on. You can do this timed for a minute or two, and uh, after they're finished the minute or two of layups, then they all rotate, so they'll all move one spot over to the next hoop, and uh, then they'll continue the same thing, and you can go until they've gone at all six nets. Pirates, it's a good game to play within a basketball unit, especially if you're working on your dribbling progression. So in Pirates, you're going to have the students in your class uh, spread out throughout the gym with a basketball, so everyone has a basketball in their hand, um, except for there will be two or three people who won't have a ball, and I'll put them up on screen here. So those three people are the Pirates. They're going to go around and try and steal the ball from uh, one of the players who is dribbling around at the basketball court. Okay, so if the player can manage to steal the ball away, so if the Pirates got that ball, that player now has to go and steal the ball from somebody else, and then so on and so forth. That player now has to steal the ball from somebody else, and that's the basics of Pirates. Some things you want to think about for Pirates. Uh, if someone steals your ball, you can't steal that ball back. You have to go for somebody else's. So the kids always want to do take backs, but uh, don't let them. Uh, the next thing, you can slowly remove basketballs from the game if you want to make it harder or uh, increase the pace and remind students that they can never stop their dribble or double dribble because that's kind of the purpose of this game is so they can focus on their dribbling skill. This game is called Mini Basketball Relay. For grades 5 to 8, you'll need basketballs and hoops, and thanks to Zane Gardner for inspiring this idea. So to start, we're going to have one team of two or three players, and we're going to face one basket, and another team who is going to face the other basket, so it's best played on half court, and it's a relay style, so you can play to a certain amount of points, first team to ten points, or for a certain amount of time, and on the go signal, the first player in each line, and they're going to go and dribble the ball up and take a shot where they feel they're comfortable to shoot from, and they'll keep shooting until somebody gets it in. And we saw the green team, they actually got it in on their first shot, so the team would yell out one, that's the score that they're at, and that's a sign for the players to retrieve their ball and they have to dribble back to their team and as soon as the players get there then the next person would go and continue on in that format and they'd go and continue on play and play until one team has won the round. This game's called Noodle Basketball for grades 5 to 8. You'll need basketballs, nets, and pool noodles and thanks to Randy Ike for another great game idea. So you start on a basketball court and if you don't have a basketball court with actual nets you can use bins or a garbage can something like that and divided by center line one team on one half one team on the other half and the majority of the players will eat, will have a ball maybe 30 percent of them won't and the blue team is going to try and score points on that net and obviously the green team on the other net and the remaining players they're actually going to be taggers and they're going to get a pool noodle so those players have pool noodle and what happens is the taggers they can only stay on their half so the blue taggers have to stay on that half and the green players have to stay on that half. And if a player, so when the game starts, you say go, and the players are going to start running around all at the same time, dribbling their basketballs, trying to score onto the other team's half. If a player enters the other team's half, and the player with the noodle tags the ball, then simply that player just has to take that ball, dribble it back to their own side, and they can reset from there. And if a player can make it around, get to the net, and take a shot, get a hoop, that team would get a point. So that's basically the idea. You'd have timed rounds, so two minutes per round. And you can have it where the first round, layups only. And then second round, you can add jump shots. Third round, add three-pointers, if you make a line or if you have a three-point line already. And on the fourth round, the taggers can go anywhere they want, not just on their own half. And if a player is tagged, then they'll have to do some sort of an exercise that you've determined beforehand. Everyone, it's a game called Popcorn Basketball, and you can use this after you've gone over the proper shooting technique or shooting form in basketball. You're going to start with a mat, an exercise mat, standing on its ends in a square, so we're looking top view here. And you're going to place lily pads around for different shooting areas to start, and then place some foam balls or dodge balls in the shooting area. And uh, basically the mat is the target, so students are going to start at a different spot, doesn't matter where, and they're going to pick up the ball in hand and you're also going to have one student who's going to be inside that match so you can actually have them there at first and uh, they're going to be either kind of the retriever in the, in the target area so on the signal the players are going to start throwing the balls trying to get it inside that mat area and when the balls go inside the player in the middle is going to just shoot them out any direction doesn't really matter and while others are still shooting and moving around to different spots and getting the balls that are loose and so it just continues on like that where they're just shooting from different spots and as a teacher you're going to go around making sure they have the proper form. This game's called Hula Knockout for grades 4 to 8 and you'll need hula hoops and basketballs or soccer balls depending on which game you want to play and this is a dribbling practice game to practice the dribbling skill so you're going to use the basketball court lines or volleyball court lines or just the full area depending how many players you have and players are going to partner up so they're each going to be in pairs one player is going to have the hula hoop and that hula hoop has to be placed down somewhere and then once it's started it cannot be moved anywhere and the other player will have a basketball or a soccer ball and so all the groups will be spread out in the area within the same format 
in their pairs, so one player will be the dribbler to start. Now basically as the signal goes to start the game, then all the players of the basketballs will dribble around practicing their, their basketball dribbling. And the players that are in the hula hoops are going to try and knock away the balls from the dribblers. And they have to stay in the hula hoop, though at least one foot has to stay in the hula hoop. So they can move around in the hula hoop, but one foot must be inside at all times. So we'll see just one player will pretend everyone's moving around, but we look at one player has dribbled and someone has knocked that ball away from that player. Well then, very simply, the player who uh, lost their ball will go and retrieve the ball and then they can continue dribbling. So you could of course change the rules as you see fit, uh, but that's the general rule. And after a couple minutes, then you can just switch. And so the, the player switch rolls, one becomes dribbler, the other stays in the hula hoop. And uh, you can also add rules where the, the dribblers as well can knock away other players' basketballs or soccer balls if they're playing uh, kicking around with their feet in the soccer. So that's it for this game idea. This game's called Master Ball. You'll need two basketballs, a uh, basketball net, and five cones. So you're going to use one of your end basketball nets and you'll place down four cones and uh, you'll have one team who will split in halves facing each other and another team doing the same thing at the other cones. And in the middle you'll put your target cone and both teams will get a basketball to start. And the first part of the game the students will be rolling the ball back and forth between their teams. So the blue and the blue will be trying to roll it back and forth. The goal is to knock over the cone. So the teams are competing to be the first team to knock over the cone in the middle. So the green team will be rolling it back and forth. And after they've rolled it they can just go to the back of the line they were just in. So what happens though is the team that knocks over the cone Cone. So blue team here has rolled it and knocked over the cone. The team that knocks over the cone gets to line up and do some layups. So right away they run to the form a line and start doing layups. While the other team will go to the opposite corner and they'll start doing 20 passes. So chest passes back and forth 20 times. And while they're doing that, the blue team is continuing uh, doing layups. So they'll take a layup, get their own rebound, go to the end of the line, pass the next person. Once the green team has finished their 20 passes, then it all resets. They put the cone back up and start again. And they'll go on and on and on like that. And that's it for this idea. This is Catch 5. It's a game that works on passing and receiving, and a friend of mine showed me it this year, and we used it in our handball and basketball units, and it worked really well. So all you need is a ball. So in this game you have one team there, the other team against them, and they're all spread out along the floor. And one team will start with a the ball. They can rock, paper, scissors, or whatever you want to, to decide who starts. And essentially the idea of the game is to try to complete five passes uh, without dropping the ball or without having the other team intercept the passes. So it's a game that uh, gets players to move to open spots and uh, find the open areas and, and work on their passing accuracy. So in this first example we'll see one team passing the ball around, and uh, it's easy when no one's moving. But uh, obviously in the real game everyone's moving around. So they've completed five passes there, and on the fifth pass, they can put the ball on the ground or slam it on the ground, and they get a point. Then the other team would start out with it. So there was a, just a very quick example. Uh, players can't pass back and forth between two people. You have to pass to somebody else, and so that way it's just not. So that way more people get a chance. So in the second example here, we'll see a player goes to make a pass and it's intercepted. So obviously on a straight interception, then the other team gets the ball and they can continue passing it along and try and make five passes. Again, everyone would be moving around. Uh, there we see a player threw it out of bounds. So when that happens, then it's simply the other team's ball, and then it continues on. So they can work on pivoting and moving around and uh, all those types of things. If a team can kind of intercept it, but uh, instead of catching the ball they just knock it to the ground then the team that knocked it to the ground will also gain possession of the ball. This game's called Hot Shots for grades 5 to 8. You need basketballs, hula hoops, and lily pads. So to start you use basketball hoops in your gym and here we have four of them in use and you're going to place a bunch of those lily pads down uh, spread out throughout the floor as shooting areas and you're going to start with one team with basketballs against another team who also has basketballs and each team will have uh, collection chambers and you can use hula hoops for those and you can have up to four teams if you'd like. So basically the idea of the game is for players to go to the shooting spot and take a shot and hopefully get it in and uh, if we see at the bottom uh, one of the red players is already on a spot so has shot but missed and if a player misses and they have to retrieve their ball and bring it to a different lily pad before they can return and try shooting from the original lily pad they were at. So they'll, if they miss, they have to go to a different one. We see a player, meanwhile, at the top of, on the white team has got to a spot and has taken a shot and has gotten it in. So when the shot goes in, then that player will get to bring that lily pad they shot from into their collection chamber and add a point to their team. So we see, too, that a red, pl a red player has gone to a shooting spot and has shot and has also got it in, so then that player would bring the lily pad to their collection chamber. Now you can go up to a certain score or for a time limit, maybe three or four minutes, um, or like I said, uh, maybe first team to get 10 lily pads in their collecting chamber wins, and then uh, yeah, play any round. This game's called The Ultimate Shooting Game. It's a basketball shooting game for grades 5 to 8. You'll need basketballs and nets, and thank you to Sarah for this game idea.
So to start, you'll use the basketball nets in your gym, and you can use all six, or you can use any amount that you'd like. And at each net, you're going to have two teams facing off against each other. So here we see all the teams and uh, all the different colors for the teams. But what we're going to do is we're just going to look at one pairing here to make it uh, easy. So basically all the teams will be doing the same thing at the same time with their hoops, but here we're just going to focus on the yellow and purple team playing against each other. So it's a shooting game, and the teams are going to start by taking shots. The first person in each line is going to shoot, and then they're going to go get the rebound. But if they get a basket, like we see there, the purple team got a basket, then everyone on the team is going to yell out one, because that was their first basket. Basket. And then of course they're going to get the rebound and then pass it to the next player in line and then continue on to the back of the line. So that just goes on and on like that. Now once a team reaches five, so we'll pretend here that we're skipped ahead to the last basket and purple team has shot and they've scored their fifth basket. So they yell out five and then out of that pair the purple team is the winning team. So what happens is the winning teams are all going to rotate. So basically purple in that pairing was uh, the winner, so they're going to rotate one basket over. Well, the losing team in the pair are going to stay at that net and they're going to face the other team, I guess the winning team out of green and blue will move over there. But So we're going to look here at the purple. They've moved over. If the other teams aren't yet finished playing their game, then that purple will just have to wait patiently and they can watch while the team finishes. And so we see that uh, the result of that game between red and light blue, well the light blue was the winning team and the red team was the losing team. So the red team is going to stay there and the light blue team is going to move on to the next spot. So of course these, uh, the timing for this will all be different, but the, the whole game will work out in the end. So we see that light blue has moved on and they're going to of course wait for the other teams to finish or whatever and then purple would play against red so everyone's going to be moving if winning teams always rotate one spot over and the losing teams always just stay where they are and they'll face a new opponent so the goal is to see if you can be a team that rotates all the way around uh, and, and facing at each net and uh, basically if we see here the yellow team that was the losing team they're, pretend they're waiting there and they're waiting for blue and green to finish so when they're waiting there they, they watch carefully because as soon as one of the teams hit their last basket and yellow num uh, number five or five then yellow gets a little bit of a head start so they can start shooting already while the winning team then quickly moves over. And essentially that's it for this game idea. So thanks again Sarah for this game idea and if you want to see more games you can head to physedgames.com for more games.